my dear participants in this MOOC course on natural resource management. Finally, we have uh, reached you know almost at the end of this 12 weeks long MOOC course and it was really a very pleasant journey for me to interact with you in the live session and also to be able to you know get this opportunity to share with you various aspects of natural resources management. Today in this lecture, I have decided to you know revise the rest of the part that I could not actually carry out revision for you. You remember that in previous one of the lectures, we have revised almost around 1 to 8 you know uh, modules and today we will start from module 9 and then till the last lectures which we have discussed about information communication technology and its application for efficient natural resources management. This revision you know lecture will actually help you to quickly go through all the you know aspects that we have discussed and this will not only help you for the upcoming final test of this course, but also it will help you actually to recall some of the important aspect that we have discussed over these 12 weeks of time. So, as I said that from module 1 to module 8, we have already carried out a revision exercise. Today, we will do it the rest of the you know module and I will go this revision exercise as per the topic and not maybe exactly uh, by the module number. But all the topics that, that we could not finish revision in the last revision exercise, today we will do that. So, let us start with one of the most uh, interesting topics that we have discussed previously and that is modeling and simulation application in agriculture for NRM. What we discussed in this topic that we discussed various aspects of modeling, simulation, power of computations, how we can actually you know mimic the almost real field conditions and then try to utilize the information data collected from field as well as from secondary sources and then you know try to predict what can happen in future. To do so basically we need good quality input, good system, computational tool so that we can get good output as simple as that. So, various type of you know natural systems which are very complex in nature we discussed in previous lectures how actually through various global circulation model, regional climate model. So, from there the output that we get which can be used for some other model exercise like water model, land use model, crop model. So, these all the things that we have discussed uh, in this modeling simulation lecture. We also discussed what is model, why we need model. Then we discussed about decision support systems, use of model, then model framework actually. What kind of models that are available in public domain? We discussed about uh, you know material models, mathematical models, various type of uh, you know mathematical models. Then we one by one also went through a various model like mathematical model we first discussed. If you recall um, that we discussed with uh, different example how mathematical models can be used for simulation and also for optimization. Two uh, most important exercise for which actually mathematical model we use. There are various type of uh, model empirical 
analytical, numerical and hybrid type of model that can be used for simulation under mathematical model system. Optimization also we discussed how important is optimization. We discussed about also you know to test validity of your model. We also uh, talked about that how the ground truth or field reality can be mimicked in the modeling system through various analytical processes. So, there are op also various optimization algorithms available gradient based non-traditional. So, this we all have discussed then we went into the various kind of you know models physical models analog models empirical models theoretical models and how they actually function what kind of data uh, they require all those things also we have discussed and all these uh, slides are already shared with you in the MOOC portal and I hope that you have critically gone through this. So, each one of uh, these uh, models have been discussed with a uh, uh, lot of details. Then deterministic model, stochastic, static and dynamic model, this also we have discussed that in what condition which model can be used, what are the requirements uh, for various models. Then uh, we discussed about general steps of modeling approach. So, the framework how actually you start with, uh, uh, with your basic conceptual model and then data, how you integrate it, how the you know uh, different uh, criteria that you test and then you calibrate, validate and uh, finally, you come out with the result which you present or share in different platform. So, calibration and validation we already discussed mentioned that these are the two very important you know exercise or aspect of modeling exercises. Then we talked about that how you know sensitivity analysis can be carried out in detail we discussed also with example that how actually this kind of modeling works. Model calibration again better the model calibration better would be your predicted outcome. So, uh, we also discussed about uh, manual calibration as well as auto calibration, how they are different from each other, what are the benefits of each one of these. Then we also discussed about performance indicators and uh, we discussed about few very commonly used uh, performance indicators which many of you might have done uh, already in your uh, graduate, postgraduate or PhDs. So, these things are, are actually carried out or analyzed to understand uh, that how your model actually performing. So, after model uh, indicate testing performance indicator then we went into crop modeling system. Uh, one of the most important uh, modeling system which actually talks about the yield means under different kind of conditions how the crop yield will vary and as you know that. Uh, the crop yield is directly related with the livelihood of the people, right. So, if we talk about natural resource management, one of the major applications of natural resource management is in the agricultural field for food production. Now, we discussed about all this uh, you know aspect key variables of crop modeling system, then we in, went into different aspect of crop modeling and how actually uh, we can minimize the errors. Then uh, we discussed about conceptual framework for crop model with you know hydrologic, climatic and remote sensing data. So, this uh, as you see here, this is one of the uh, work that from our lab we have carried out this conceptual framework and uh, this has also uh, very recently has been published in the journal of uh, economics and climate related aspect, ecology and economics related aspect. So, here as you see that we discussed also if you recall that how different kind of um, uh, modeling system, hydrologic, climatic, remote sensing data uh, you know uh, can be integrated. Today we have very powerful computational system where we can actually together can run different types of uh, you know uh, demanding software 
remote sensing, hydrologic model, climate model. So, the integration has, has become the, the art of, of today's uh, modeling exercise and along with that when you bring in artificial intelligence and machine learning, then the power of your uh, modeling systems you know become much much higher. So, we also discussed about uh, the conceptual simulation optimization framework for water management. We also shared with you that how uh, uh, the crop models over the in the last uh, few decades actually has evolved. So, we started from the uh, very beginning of the crop modeling days and till very recently its, its development. Then uh, we discussed about hydro, hydrological model, climate model and how they are linked with uh, agricultural productions and how these uh, different uh, uh, models you know can actually utilize the one of the most important resource which is water in the best possible manner to give better outcome which is food production or agricultural productions and various other uses uh, you know for generating livelihood for people. Then we talked about GCM and RCMs how they work and then how we can actually apply different kind of climate models outcome into agriculture system. We also then uh, discussed about if you recall uh, about uh, precision farming and protected cultivations uh, which are very very uh, becoming popular in developed country as well as in our countries. So, we discussed about the various purposes of, of this kind of you know farming system and then we have uh, also uh, discussed about uh, various types of precision farming and how they look like how they are maintained. They are also some of some of the uh, precision farming system we have also discussed with the designs and engineering aspect. So, structural components of various greenhouses also we have discussed. We discussed how uh, wind can affect these structures and how you should modify the structures and made it such a way um, that your, your greenhouse remain uh, relatively stable. Then uh, we talked about various kind of calculation of, of greenhouse efficiency, ventilation of air, maintaining humidity etcetera etcetera. So, these are the things also we have discussed. Then we also discussed about other types of protected cultivation structures and how they are used in developed as well as in developing countries. Agro shedding applications also we have discussed and how different type of materials are actually used for uh, this kind of agro shedding. We also talks about uh, you know tunnel system, tunnel agriculture um, then uh, to create different kind of structure which can avoid your insect infestations. So, I think that quite a lot of you know examples uh, have been discussed. Uh, under this precision uh, farming structures. We talked about mulching, we talked about also micro irrigation system, drip irrigation layout, different type of drip irrigation tools and techniques, sprinkler system, advantage of drip irrigation and also sprinkler irrigation which are you know which one having uh, you know better uh, uses in which conditions, they are disadvantages as well as advantages. We also talked about soilless cultivation which is becoming uh, very very popular these days uh, because soil also you know at some places especially if you talk about think about the urban areas uh, almost 35 to 40 percent of the urban areas are available on the building itself. So, you know different kind of thoughts are going on then how these built areas can be also utilized for alternative farmings and then comes in your the idea of soilless culture various kind of materials uh, are discussed in this lecture. We also talked about hydroponic system and how it works, what are the different kind of benefits, limitations, how it should be built. So, a lot of I think you know topics and aspects has been discussed under this protection uh, farming. Uh, vertical farming also we talked about 
that how different kind of waste material with plastic bottles can also be used for vertical farming which are the different kind of equipment that you need how it should be planned what kind of plant we then talked about automatic irrigation systems because water resource has become a very very scarce commodity at many places of the world so the option that left with us is that how we can actually uh, maximize the utility of each drop of water so the concept of crop per drop also you know has been discussed we discussed about utilization of ai ml in irrigation system management uh, different kind of sensors how it can be used then we talked about iot iot components which are the components how it can be used for water management in fact uh, uh, if you recall that in the uh, lectures we also discussed about uh, um, that how IOT, iot can be utilized uh, uh, you know for uh, different kind of land preparations and various other farming practices so the, its application in agriculture is quite huge and again we have also discussed uh, uh, this particular aspect in great detail in some other forum so application of remote sensing in agriculture is a very well talked subject and if you recall that we handled this particular topic um, in a separate lecture also discussing about various aspect of of remote sensing and its in application then uh, we went into another a very very important topic that is the multiple criteria decision analysis and uses of mcda in agriculture for natural resource management now mcda uh, can be used for you know various aspect which we discussed if you recall that uh, we talked about uh, that how criteria versus alternatives you know you can choose the best alternatives for for a particular criteria and there are various mcda methods we discussed about those things in great detail and uh, then one by one every mcda method we discussed like analytical hierarchy process ahp how it works then uh, we talked about uh, uh, how it can be used for potential uh, water management ground water management flood hazard mapping also and then application of mcda in precision farming structure selection is also in very very high demand where you can actually identify or find out the optimum solution for your purpose forest fire mapping even that also we discussed uh, how mcda can help i hope that all of you have gone through this uh, slides very very carefully you need to give some time and that's the precise reason that today uh, this revision exercise i am carrying out for the benefit of all of you so this this uh, was the part um, under precision farming and mcda uh, introduction of a various modeling system how it works so then let us uh, uh, go to the next topic for revision and uh, that would be your modeling for nrm if you recall that uh, we have discussed about uh, modeling sensitivity uncertainty model sensitivity analysis how you actually carry out a various way of sensitivity analysis and uh, with example uh, we have discussed uh, model uncertainty analysis also we have discussed risk and reliability how you can actually measure that model sensitivity analysis utilizing neural network what are the inputs what are the outputs these all we have uh discussed in the previous lecture then we go less next topic after the sensitivity analysis one uh, that is your mcda part one here uh, if you recall that we have discussed in various aspect of mcda with real example and how you know different methods of mcda calculate uh, the weightage and on that basis how we actually carry out the ranking and then you choose on the top most the best one as your option so we discussed about wsm weighted sum method then we discussed about um, waspas 
and each one we have discussed if you recall with appropriate example. Then we discussed about also WSM weighted sum model, then weighted product model. So, weighted product model is uh, actually the you multiply a weighted sum model you add. So, these are the aspect that we discussed under um, MCDM part 1 and then in the lecture MCDA part 2. In part 2, if you recall that uh, we have discussed about critic method, how critic method actually works again with uh, you know with the data and example. So, we kept if you recall that a single example for all the methods of MCDA so that you understand it better after critic methods then entropy method then again AHP in great detail with the same example. So, with single example we have discussed all the methods. Then we talked about the limitation of AHP though AHP is very popular then Delphi technique. Uh, Delphi technique is again one of the very important uh, tools or techniques for data collections and uh, then we talked about AHP criteria sub criteria, how different sub criteria are um, actually chosen. So, uh, like this way MCDA has also been covered in great detail and then we went uh, finally the last part of MCDM that was to talk about few other methods like topsis how topsis actually can be uh, various way ca can be calculated and ranking can be made then corpus corpus we also discussed with same example like others then principal component analysis many of you might be already using it um, so how principal pca can be also used for better ranking so in a sense that uh, you know we discussed uh, the mcda which is a very very important tools or techniques for ranking finding ranking of your alternatives so that you can take a decision at the field level that which one actually you need to uh, apply in the field then if you recall that we have discussed in great detail um, about environment impact assessment because uh, this is one uh, uh, technique uh, which help you to understand the environment better and environment has direct link with uh, natural resources. So, we discussed about EIA in great detail about its uses, why it is done, what is the goal of EIA, principles of EIA, uh, then we went into benefits of conducting EIA, then the methods. So, we took actually quite significant amount of time to discuss about uh, the methods uh, of EIA and there we discussed various methods like LCA and uh, then uh, GMP RAM method. Each one of them we have discussed if you recall with, with certain example and uh, then fuzzy arithmetic process, fuzzy logic process, CBA another very important aspect that we have discussed. So, please uh, you know go through it with little bit of care because these uh, aspects would be very very helpful when you actually work in the field um, whether into academics or in professions. So, uh, CBA also we have discussed uh, with uh, some example and uh, then hedonic pricing also we have discussed how it actually carried out. Um, little bit of linkage of EIA how it helps in, um, in sustainable development, legal and institutional framework how EIA plays an important role into that because environment uh, you know ultimately goes uh, into some legal system. We have environmental law also, uh, we discussed about also different uh, uh, rules, laws and tribunals and how uh, the process of EIA actually carried out. So, in India we have given some example to you and explained that 
how EIA process takes place in our country, how World Bank actually uh, which is a very active uh, organization across the world and especially in developing country how they look at uh, EIA exercise, EIA process we discussed about all the different processes of EIA and then in great detail uh, if you recall that we have discussed about each of the processes of EIA and uh, please uh, uh, go through it with uh, utmost care because EIA is another very very important uh, aspect which you know can can actually you know, provide you opportunity uh, for some uh, you know professionals uh, uh, you know exposure professionals experience and can help you uh, working in the field. So, uh, from there we went into environment management plan and if you recall we discussed about environment management plan also in great detail. Then EIS environment impact statement uh, which is very very critically important uh, and this basically you know decides the fate of the natural resources and its utilizations. Then we discussed one very important aspect of EIA and public participation because with, without our your mind and all society's participation in this exercise it, it won't be a success and I if you recall that we have discussed again this aspect in great detail how public participation in project cycle even uh, development process itself is important because the input from the public is critical for a good EIA. If you recall that uh, we also discussed a few example about that. Environment audit also we discussed. Again this is a very very uh, important aspects for uh, anyone who wants to get into in a professional aspect of this. So, environment audit also we discussed uh, all the fundamental things objectives of this various types of auditing process and how uh, these auditing process are being carried out, which are the benefits, some of its limitation also has been discussed. Then uh, we came into environmental audit report EAR another very important aspect and uh, if you recall that uh, in the uh, lecture schedule we have actually discussed this, these sections very very uh, in detail and with uh, more time. So, I will again uh, you know request all of you to consider to go through this li with little bit of time and because these concepts uh, can allow you to get into some professional exercise related to natural resource auditing, environment auditing. So, benefits also we have discussed then we discussed about how you know EIA actually um, help your society and how it helps in various kind of assessment, strategic environment assessment. Then finally, we discussed about also the limitation um, that EIA exercise has. So, overall uh, I think that if you recall this was a uh, really a very consolidated uh, you know discussions that together we have gone through. Please uh, follow it properly and it will really help you in a great way. Then we uh, came into you know remote sensing and GIS in, uh, in a very particular way. At the previous uh, lecture within the precision farming and modeling we discussed remote sensing and GIS just uh, touched upon that, but later then we discussed in a very great detail about these uh, tools and techniques different kind of uh, you know remote sensing processes we have discussed what are the different steps are involved into it that also we have detailed discussion taken place. How in agriculture remote sensing can play a role various aspect of agriculture that we also uh, discussed application of remote sensing for another natural resource that is forest how it can be applied that also we have discussed then water. So, each one of these we have discussed with, with the example then we uh, came into uh, the sensor part of remote sensing 
which is one of the you know most important aspect uh, of remote sensing exercise. So, we discussed with uh, various example and how different kind of spectral images it differently provide you know different kind of informations and data uh, hyperspectral, multispectral, how they are different from each other in, in which, con which condition for which kind of resources, what kind of spectral imagery, imagery is useful. We discussed all these things uh, in great detail and uh, then how technically actually this uh, spectral imagery process work that also we have discussed and uh, then how you know remote sensing depends on uh, different source of electromagnetic radiation and on that basis how they are different from each other and every every one of them can be actually used uh, for for different purposes spectral reflectance also we have discussed in great detail how spectral re reflectance curve help us to understand uh, different data that are being generated through the spectral images. Spectral reflectance curve also how it helps in understanding uh, different uh, condition on the ground on the earth surface, vegetation, vegetation type, its uh, conditions like its uh, moisture content even in vegetation. So, these all those things uh, how actually it can be carried out we have discussed uh, in these remote sensing and GIS classes. So, a great deal of uh, discussion taken place on spectral reflectance on vegetation, then on soils, how it works for water because as I said that the three uh, major resources that are directly linked with uh, human uh, life or society is soil, water, air and then uh, you know your vegetation or plant. So, uh, these all, all resources uh, can be actually monitored very successfully through remote sensing and GIS. We talked about another important aspect about image classifications and I understand that probably you have gone through these classes and lectures carefully. Having said that once again I remind you that remote sensing GIS is a subject which requires a completely specialized training. In this course under natural resource management, it was my attempt to introduce uh, these particular tools and techniques to you because it is a, a tool which is you know uh, very effectively used for natural resource management. We talked about then uh, supervised unsupervised classifications and, uh, and how how actually it differs from each other. Uh, then one by one example I have given that how uh, land use land cover can be studied and uh, the changes over time and then what, what kind of conditions actually remote sensing data gives you better informations and how uh, season wise you know uh, the pictures quality also changes. We have given real examples of different places of our country with uh, uh, you know some crops uh, data and then explain to you that how it works. We talked about vegetation index because NDVI, EVI, SAVI these are the index which actually helps in understanding uh, the vegetation or the crop cover in a better way. So, after vegetation index uh, then we uh, just uh, discuss about role of remote sensing in general in agriculture, uh, satellite based you know different kind of uh, data generation and what are the different processes that are being followed. Sebal is one of the process that I have discussed in great detail um, especially from the point of view of uh, you know satellites role in helping us to monitor the natural resources. Then we discussed uh, the geographic information system GIS. Many of you might be using it already or some of you might you know hope to use in future. So, GIS again is uh, another important uh, tool that you can actually utilize for various purposes. We discussed about GIS uh, very fundamental way 
its applications, its principles, goals, how it works, certain basic you know mechanism of uh, GIS data with some real case studies or example. So, after uh, remote sensing then uh, uh, if you recall uh, we discussed uh, another important topic that was uh, you know climate change vulnerability. How can we leave this topic when we talk about natural resource management and here we talked about the vulnerability and adaptation in natural resource management. If you recall that we started with uh, the basic fundamental thing of, of the drivers which actually change the climate. So, we talked about natural and anthropogenic driver, two drivers and how they actually impact our climate and how they change it and what are the different phenomena uh, that takes place due to climate change and what is climate variability. We also discussed uh, uh, the differences between climate and weather which often actually we get confused, tend to get confused. Uh, sometime we take weather simple weather changes as climate changes. We discussed about that in great detail if you recall. Then one by one uh, we uh, talked about uh, various terminologies that are being used in the field of vulnerability and adaptation in the field of climate change. So, we discussed about adaptive capacity, exposure, hazard, impact which you know um, whenever you talk about the impact of climate change or natural resource management these are the aspects will come into picture. So, then we also uh, uh, you know discuss about risk, sensitivity, vulnerability, vulnerability index. Then we went into the, the model the risk management and assessment framework as given by uh, intergovernmental panel of climate change IPCC discussed in great detail these all aspects and then next we went into the risk and uh, you know relation between risk, hazard, vulnerability and exposure and after that then we looked at that how risk from present climate variability and risk from future climate uh, changes they work. So, in both the cases, both the cases you know the vulnerability analysis to know the indicators of vulnerability is important which actually we you know discussed it in a great detail about vulnerability, sensitivity analysis, adaptations. So, again there is a vulnerability assessment process that we have discussed the given already well given framework by IPPC. So, we discussed about uh, these processes and the conceptual framework for assessment of risk again given by IPPC how you actually assess hazard, vulnerability and exposure and because risk is a product of vulnerability, hazard and exposure. So, you know it works uh, almost uh, together and to understand risk we need to understand uh, this vulnerability hazard exposure and we have discussed that in great detail. Uh, if you recall step by step we have discussed the different you know reduction of risk under climate change how we can do it. Then we also uh, discussed about the vulnerability assessment approaches various approaches. Again we discussed about three different tire if you remember. So, the tire one is the very basic tire uh, which uh, you know even unskilled uh, manpower can do it In tire two is uh, uh, required medium uh, skill manpower and also you need medium budget. Tire three is the topmost you know level of vulnerability assessment where you need uh, some good high skill technical expertise and because it also provides you know very specific adaptation options which finally, policy makers can work on that and implement. We have also discussed these things uh, tire wise, tire 1, tire 2, how actually you can step wise follow it and get the vulnerability classes. So, tire 1 and tire you know, 3 when you combine you basically get on the tire 2 which is a 
medium you know skill medium outcome so that one process which i think most of the time people prefer to follow so we discussed about these tires in great detail then we discussed about the indicators you know uh, that how vulnerability can be assessed uh, through uh, different indicators now the indicators and its its applications and who apply it that also we have discussed quality of indicators has also been discussed then categories of indicators uh, for vulnerability assessment also we have discussed various categories and uh, the examples of vulnerability from which sector which indicator you should use that also we have discussed we have discussed uh, each one of those uh, indicator with the real example if you remember then we discussed about the adaptation planning and implementation process once you understand the indicator through indicator you identify the vulnerability of a particular you know sector of a people or, or location then you come out with some adaptation planning and this is a adaptation process which uh, you know even fcc has given a framework and lot of exercise studies has been gone behind it and then this kind of framework has come into picture so this uh, helps us in planning proper adaptation and uh, to do that if you take one example of floods then we discussed about that how in case of flood you can actually carry out adaptive exercise how people adaptation can be built or resilience can be built so to understand uh, this flood or drought situation there are various kind of indices which help us to understand the severity of drought or flood that also we have uh, discussed we discussed about meteorological drought indices and then we talked about various methods of calculating or analyzing meteorological drought after meteorological drought we discussed about agricultural drought how agricultural uh, or hydrological drought how hydrological drought is different from meteorological drought different indices for hydrological drought we have discussed and how they can be calculated that also we have discussed and which value means what level of severity of drought that also has been discussed so after meteorological drought indices then hydrological drought indices and then finally we uh, discussed about agricultural drought indices so these three actually looks at uh, drought in a through through different way and their level of severity analysis also differs from each other well then after uh, this uh, vulnerability indicators and and its adaptation analysis finally then we have gone into in role of ict so in role of ict we discussed about uh, how information communication technology can be used uh, for natural resource management we talked about various components of ict how data actually flows within an ict system how ict can helps in developing sustainable framework relationship between ict and environment also has been discussed various factors you know uh, affecting information communication technology role of ict in natural resource management how actually ict can be utilized for resource management for soil for water for agriculture for disaster management so after this fundamental aspect then we discussed each sector like soil then water so uh, how ict actually different sector wise or different types of natural resource wise can be utilized so for soil also we have uh, if you recall that uh, different kind of satellite imagery microwave sensing how differently for different kind of soil problem it can be utilized we have discussed for soil and then we have discussed also for water so and uh, on that actually the was the last uh, 
topic that we discussed uh, in this MOOC course was the ICT for efficient uh, water management and we uh, looked at the various aspect uh, associated with water management and how information communication technology basically can help uh, to manage water uh, looking at you know all these various aspects uh, water availability, river pollution, water conflicts, groundwater pollution. So, various uh, important aspects associated with water management can also be you know studied with the help of ICT that we have discussed application of ICT for different water management areas also we have discussed and then we talked about um, that how DSS which is a important part of ICT decision support system how it helps in water management. We talked about the framework of a standard DSS, GIS and its role in uh, water management meters and sensors uh, for again leakage study, uh, monitoring, water management, hydraulic models, how it helps for predicting the water conditions, availability in certain area, water supply irrigation design management through ICT can be done very effectively, urban water management. So, overall ICT's role in water management you know is great. In fact, even the future you know planning exercise for water management also can be carried out utilizing ICT. We discussed about that and uh, that actually uh, bring us uh, the end of the all the uh, topics or uh, modules that we wanted to uh, discuss about and that is how we come uh, to the end of uh, this MOOC course on natural resource management and I hope that all of you have enjoyed this course and uh, I wish all of you all the best for the upcoming test which is the final test. Um, so, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for your interest in this MOOC course on natural resource management.